and welcome to this week's show where we are looking at the world's greatest stuntman. Throw a stick and you could hit half a dozen, I imagine. But back in 1978, there was only one. and His name was Sonny Hooper. Um, and he was a creation of Hal Needham and uh, Burt Reynolds. And it was the homage to the Hollywood stunt performer. And of course, Hal got an opportunity to make this movie on the on the back of the success of Smokey and the Bandit, um, and it it's got everything. You know, it's it's one of those where you spend a lot of your life looking at film and television and going, "Oh, isn't that look that so and so?" There's um, uh, uh, I know that guy. What's that guy's name? That guy there. This really has a, a bunch of those in 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 the whole thing, but but. Um, uh, Burt Reynolds is in lots of scenes with lots of stuntmen. You'll spot Joffrey Brown in there. Uh, you'll spot Buddy Joe Hooker in there. Um, they're always in scenes, in and around everywhere. And it's uh, it's a terrific story um, about uh, the, the life of the ageing stuntman, the man who's been there for some time and is at the very peak of his career. Um, but he's just starting to feel it a bit, you know, um, you, you do falls and punches and you fall off stuff and it takes longer to, to get better. Um, a lot of stunt coordinators will say that that's why they go to stunt coordinating. You know, they don't really want to do these gags anymore. They're quite happy to, uh, arrange them for others, but you know, you do a, do a car turnover. Rob Hunt is a good example. I, I watched Rob Hunt do a, a, a car gag and uh, I asked him how he was the following day and he said, I'm just going to take today off. He said, I have to take today. I've just, it's the, the pain is still there. I've got a terrible headache and aches and bruises and all that sort of stuff. But that's, you know, even though you're, you're, you're fully prepared, the helmet, the neck brace, the, the roll cage, the whole nine yards, it still takes it out of you because you've got to be in the thing and doing it for real. Well, this is the story of Hooper, who is at that part of his career. And um, Brian Keith plays his uh, uh, the older stunt guy, Jocko Doyle, who uh, I think is based around the old stuntman, uh, Jock Mahoney, I think is, is, is where he's based. Well, that's the type of character. So he was there, he was the top guy, now it's Hooper. And then there's this young kid, Ski, played by uh, Jan Michael Vincent, um, who is coming along and the director wants more and is prepared to get rid of this because he wants that, you know, he's this sort of egomaniac character. Hal Needham directing, uh, so it's a movie within a movie, and uh, there's a number of terrific moments to savour and enjoy, and we'll start at the very beginning. So, it's time for Hooper. Let's try and break some of the scenes down. Here's the motorbike stunt at the start. Um, Stan Barrett is doing the doubling here. There's a POV shot which is missing from this particular edit, but um, is of Hal Needham. Up, on to, and over. Now, Buddy Joe Hooker was credited with this for many years, but he's there on the left-hand side of shot in the green top we'll have a look at it there there's joffrey brown operating camera in between tommy huff and there uh was uh was buddy joe so it couldn't have been him right buddy joe again there on the right hand side with bert going up onto the roof to swing across again stan barrett on this particular occasion um the angle on this is quite odd it looks like they've done it twice so here's the first part which is the below shot let's go now and starts, it's a seat drop, right? Nice and flat. Then the second shot is very, very vertical and only changing at the last, oh, just at the last moment. Uh, not a real dog, by the way. Don't get excited. It's not a real dog. It was a fluffy toy for the fall, all right? That was the whole purpose of the, of the seat. Um, the stunt show, of course, uh, which Sonny gets involved in, the Wild West. Um, this is... Billy Burton, watch the way he comes, jumps down onto the horse, almost side saddle, and swings his left leg over, down onto the ground as if he's going to bounce up doing a Pony Express mount, 
but grabs on to the horse and lets the horse take him along as the carriage then comes and tumbles over. It's fantastic. Very, very good. And of course, during that whole chariot sequence, the horses are being directed um, by uh, outriders at the front. Uh, Gary Combs is, in fact, doubling uh, Bert here, and uh, Buddy Joe is doubling uh, Jan Michael Vincent. And, of course, ultimately what happens is that the chariot then snaps in two and he is dragged. That's just the first part of it there. It cuts then away to Jan Michael Vincent. Um, some of the team here, of course, so J.D. David, uh, Benny Moore, Alan Olney and Joffrey Brown. They are being instructed by Bobby Bass about this upcoming sequence. There's Janet Brady. Uh, there's uh, Louise Johnson. And it's this motorbike sequence. Uh, Joffrey's on the front. Uh, JD's on the back, and then just sliding the bike down, and she takes a, a, a fair heavy impact there. Joffrey's rolled himself up in a ball, um, but of course she was the first. Here's it from the other angle. You'll see it better from this angle, and goes down, bang, right down there. Whoa. Just winded her for a second, but she's good, made of stern stuff. And uh, an excellent job. And uh, this is Janet Brady. This is her first car turner. Hadn't done one. And manages to land that right into camera. Super job. Hal's happy. The world's happy. And there she is. Pretty as a picture. Boom. Job's a good one. This is the final shot in the film. Took it from a slightly different angle from over there. Uh, the helicopter high fall. Um, firstly, this is Bert on the skid of a real helicopter coming into camera, and he's gonna he's gonna dive out. And he's gonna, but he's what fifteen twenty feet up. That's a fed. I mean, he, he's the biggest star in the world. And then as soon as he starts to do the jump, he'll leap off into boxes, which is just here. Off he goes, and then the high part of the fall is done by A.J. Bakunas, 232 feet. It was a world record back then in 1978. Um, it um, Look at his positioning. Look at his feet starting to come over his head. He's still looking at the bag. He's still looking at the airbag, and his feet are still coming over his head, and he's still looking at the airbag. He's still making sure everything's where it should be, and now he's beyond that point of control, and now, of course, his legs take over, and he is facing upwards, but he is aware of where that bag is, and even, again, you know, even if it's a great big bag, um, there's a large bag and a small bag, but you've got to hit it right. You've got to hit it properly. Slapping your arms down, boom, right there. And uh, little eyes and a mouth on the side with a blow of relief. Uh, Bert Reynolds is doing some driving. I wanted to spot this because this is actually Bert. Look, he flips this round and he's in the vehicle with, um, <laughs> with the two, you know, with Sally. I mean, it's a crazy why you'd be allowed to do that, but that's, you know, Bert's Bert, isn't he? Uh, the Palomino fight. And. Uh, this is a, another example of, of the great barroom brawl, you know? You get to do all of this terrific stuff. Um, and uh, there are moments in this fight which is just spectacular. Um, Terry Bradshaw, we're going to have a look at in a moment, when he's literally thrown out and misses the landing area completely. There's Bert goes out, and then Terry comes out. He's so excited about the whole thing. He comes out at full stretch, full pelt, supposed to land on the boxes and everything behind him, misses it completely, and lands right out onto the floor. Um, obviously, his wrestling background gave him... <laughs> I'd given him some sort of protection there. The adrenaline was up to 11, um, I think, when he started uh, his approach for that. Um, and that is one of my favorite dismounts there. They're coming in two directions and being taken away. This is Hank Hooker uh, in the car. Um, Hank is in a fire suit. They are aware that there's going to be a fire. Uh, he has four minutes of air um, in which uh, to use, but as far as Hal Needham's concerned, he's in there too long. Hal then comes over and says, get him out. They open the doors, creates oxygen, which sends it in, which increases the fire. Hank, look, and there goes Hal, drags him out. Get him out. That's the director, Hal Needham. 
has you know never forgotten about being a stuntman. He's aware of the fact that this guy has four minutes and you're in there too long, son, it's time to get out. And of course, this whole Damnation Alley sequence is a huge explosive sequence. They're building stuff, they're, they're putting ramps, they're putting dynamite everywhere. Nowhere is safe. The whole place is going to be flattened um, because it's going to end up uh, to, to, uh, to be a college, I believe, in many years later. Um, explosive everywhere, everything's protected, big flashbangs all over the place. You name it, it's going to go up in flames. And there's moments in this sequence which are just crazy. I mean, simply crazy. And when they start to go for action, clapperboards go, everything is running. Hal gives it the now. Go! And away they go. And, uh, you know, any excuse to blow anything up again, Buddy Joe driving the Trans Am, and uh, there's some gr- oh down another one there. Some terrific action going on. It's all background action. This is why they got five or six cameras at the same time doing this. You can't afford to miss anything at all. This moment's actually missed in the in the picture completely. Uh, car turnovers and more explosions going off. I think the idea possibly to cover the place with as, as many explosions as possible. Here's an oil tanker. That is going to go off right down there. Bang! And that's Hal standing nearby. Yep, happy with that. Great job. Helicopter sequences. And uh, we're going to get to a stage now where the chimney stack's going to go. And they'd wetted the, they, the, the the floor had been wet, you know? And so you're, uh, when that chimney stack starts to go, I suppose your gut feeling is to floor it and set, but that will just, it won't give you too much traction to the back wheels. So the smaller one goes and he just has to keep going. Here's the big one. He's got to keep going and keep going. And this is where it just misses the vehicle and takes the other vehicle out just at the last moment. It's a, um, as Buddy Joe says himself, he's got big cojones to be able to just sit there and and and, and calmly get that done. Um, and of course, this is the sequence from the film with the explosions everywhere. And it's look just oh, it's just nowadays you wouldn't even have it, you know. The rocket car jump is a different kettle of fish entirely um, because that's very clearly not the same vehicle. There were test jumps. But it's unmanned. It's an unmanned flight. And even that part probably isn't manned, I would have thought. It's just too dangerous to have it there. But nevertheless, an extraordinary job. Well, there you go. You can take your uh, take a breath after all of that. And um, the, uh, the rocket car jump actually came as a great surprise to many people, uh, which I found fascinating because over the years, you know, it's been described as as you know the 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 biggest car jump and all of this sort of stuff you very rarely see any ma- there's no making of footage of that even with the, the the making of footage that we've used here there's no making of footage in connection with the uh, the rocket car jump itself and yet it's the big uh, i want to say macguffin but it's the it's it's that thing that is weighing over the whole movie right the way through the whole picture um how about if we we have a car jump in the thing? Okay, and then oh, the biggest, it's the biggest car stunt. It deserves the biggest paycheck, all of that sort of stuff. So it's been going on in the movie throughout the movie. What about the rocket car gag? And you want to this this? And everybody keeps pro- prompting it along the way, and then when it turns up, it's very clearly not the Trans Am, you know, um, but it turns out. The Buddy Joe Hooker was in the vehicle for test jumps. They were doing some test jumping, and um, it had aerofoils on the side, and and uh, there was talk of um, the car being remote controlled whilst Buddy was in it uh, at one point to make to to actually have an. They were working towards doing it for real, but had got to the stage where it just became too complicated and too dangerous very clearly so logic and common sense said let's let's send it unmanned which is what they did but nevertheless um, uh, it doesn't take anything away from the uh, 
you know, the, 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 the overall size of the movie. It needed a big rocket car thing, and they got one at the end of the picture. So um, there we go. So that's it. That's Hooper. Um, I hope you enjoyed that, and we will do it all again next week with a movie that is, believe it or not, 30 years old. I can't believe it myself. Um, we are going to watch uh, and uh, have a look at Basic Instinct next week. Uh, so there will be uh, there's a couple of lovely little action moments in that which I've always been a fan of. I remember seeing it at the cinema and, and really enjoying it. Not just for that reason, you understand, but um, obviously the action's very important. Yes, I fell in love with Sharon Stone. Everybody fell in love with Sharon Stone, and we kind of fell in love with Michael Douglas too. But uh, we'll discuss that more next time. Until then, uh, thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.